So. Yeah, being in the Old Testament, seeing the foreshadowing of Christ through so many people, right, is wonderful. Mm. We talked about David yesterday, mm. and yeah, the the comparisons with David, it's like David is in the Old Testament understanding at that time is just above and beyond anyone else, mm-hmm. and then Christ is way beyond that, mm. even in his descriptions. Mm. Right. Yeah. yeah, would you pray with us? Sure, Father in heaven, when when we consider how glorious and worthy you are. We are so thankful that you have saved us for the praise of the glory of your grace. uh, We pray that you would bless not just this session, but this whole endeavor, that you would use it to broadcast your glory and that many, many people would drink and drink more deeply from the well of living water that Christ is to us. In Jesus' name. Hello and welcome back to the Pilgrim's Well. I have the special privilege today to um, talk about God's Word with another brother in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul Smalley is a uh, husband and a father, a teacher and a preacher and an author, but most of all a um, servant of the living God. Why don't we start there and, and Paul, can you share with us how the Lord brought you to himself mm. and opened the, uh, your eyes to see his glory? Thanks, Paul. As a human being, I'm created to be a servant of God, but when I came into this world, I was not serving Him. Mm -hmm. Um, I was a wicked, sinful person, and um, on the outside, I was kind of a nice church kid growing Mm -hmm. up. I grew up within a church, um, but I really didn't understand the gospel. Um, In fact, in the church that I was going to at the time, I really don't remember hearing the gospel, Mm -hmm. at least not in a very clear way. Um, But I thought I was a Christian. Mm -hmm. I was a member of the church, um, got confirmed when I was a teenager and all that. But the older I got in my teen years, the more just the wickedness, the horrendous pride, um, lust, uh, covetousness, uh, greed for attention upon myself, Mm -hmm. anger. It was just kind of, it was like a volcano that was bubbling forth. and frankly, if, if the Lord hadn't done something in my life in a merciful and gracious way, I might have just walked away from church altogether. Wow. Um, but in his kindness, he did intervene. He, it began by him awakening me when I was uh, just graduated from high school. Mm. Uh, the girl that I was dating at the time uh, broke up with me, and uh, as a result of that breakup, um, I became aware that there was something wrong with me, Mm. and I really couldn't tell you what it was, but I knew it had something to do with God. Mm. I needed something, and I was, there was something wrong inside of me. And so I picked up my Bible again for the first time in years in a serious way and tried to read it, but I couldn't make any sense out of it. Mm. Um, But when I went away to college that fall, there were some Uh, young men who were out uh, with a campus group and trying to invite people to Bible studies. Mm -hmm. And when they asked me, would you like to be part of a Bible study? I said, yes, because I Mm -hmm. knew I needed something. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, over the course of going to that Bible study, and they introduced me to a Bible teaching church, Mm -hmm. um, I came to understand some things that I never had seen before. Um, The Lord opened my eyes to see the fact that uh, I would never be good enough to meet mm. his holy standards. Mm. I had always thought if I just tried hard enough, maybe I would make it. Um, but no, he showed me that I was too sinful. I was too corrupt for that. But God knew that. And in his mm. mercy, he'd sent his son and that the Lord Jesus Christ had lived a perfect life. And he, he gave himself to die on the cross for sinners. He mm. took their place. Um, I'd I'd never heard that before. Um, And so we needed to take our sins to him and um, to confess our sins to him, to trust in his blood Mm. uh, for the forgiveness of sins. They also taught me that there was no way that any of us could live the Christian life without the work of the Holy Spirit. 
And so um, they taught me to depend upon the Holy Spirit. And for me, it wasn't a um, like a crisis where I can point to a particular day or mm-hmm. um, when I was converted, but sometime during my freshman year of college, mm-hmm. God changed me. Yeah. Um, prior to that, I, I liked going to church because I liked music. Mm-hmm. Um, but after that, I went to the worship service because I loved God and mm-hmm. I wanted to praise Him. Yeah. Um, prior to that, I was very self-righteous. After that, um, I recognized my sinfulness, and I was starting to make some progress in Mm. humility. Mm. Um, Before that, uh, I was nice to people, but just because I wanted them to like me. After that, I I really started to care about people for who they were. Mm. God changed the way I spent my money. He changed the music that I listened to. Um, I was a new man. Wow. So... I, I picked up the Bible, um, and instead of just being this boring, incomprehensible book, I, I just couldn't put it down. It was my food. I just read it and read it and read it and read it. So, and since then, uh, God has so faithfully led me um, and worked in my life. I'm still, uh, I should probably have told you to put your hard hat on because I'm a construction zone. <laughs> um, I'm still under construction, um, but God has been very gracious, mm. and he just continues to keep me as his child and, and lead me forward. Mm. Well, I think we're all still construction zones, right? There, uh, I think your construction is probably more finished than mine. So I think I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very recognizable to see God's grace. I like how you explained that before you actually came to know the Lord, you began to see things. And I think that's really almost a sunrise of God in our lives, mm. right? Things become in picture and we think we can see things. And really what's happening is, is the Holy Spirit is slowly beginning to point us to himself. Yes. Right? Yeah. Tis the Spirit's rising beam. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.